Um, but my name is Brandon. I'm an alcoholic. So, um, yeah, first, I want to thank John for the invite, uh, the opportunity to do this. I attended this meeting a, a decent bit um, earlier in the year and like kind of during COVID. And then I hadn't been in a little while and then hopped on last uh, Saturday and, um, you know, sure enough, shared and, and got the opportunity to do this. And one thing I really like about this meeting overall is it is a pretty good mix of people. And, you know, there's a good amount, a lot of times of kind of people in earlier recovery. Um, and, you know, ultimately as, as a sober person, my, my hope is to try to carry a message to you all, right? A, a message of hope and a message of strength. Um, and the message I actually have to carry for you is, you know, this thing absolutely works. And this is coming from someone who was convinced that it did not. Um, my sobriety date is January 31st, 2011. And so, you know, earlier this year, I celebrated 10 years. And the reason I bring that up is because that's like absolutely absurd. I never would have thought, you know, when I came to this program, I mean, I remember not being able to reach the elusive 30 day chip over and over and over and over again, and just kind of coming and getting white chips and, you know, almost just like mentally spacing them out. Be like, well, I picked one up yesterday. I don't want to get one again today. Like these people are going to think I'm stealing all their chips, you know? And it was just like, I could not get it. And I, you know, I had these sponsors at the time and, you know, it's, I, I did what I thought they were asking of me. I'm sure like my, my clarity wasn't the best looking back on it, but you know, a lot of the message that I got was to keep coming to meetings and to keep showing up. Um, and I did that. I mean, there were some days I literally went to like two, three meetings a day. Um, and I would literally get, get like, I mean, I use drugs as well. And I would, I would relapse in between meetings and then show up to the next meeting. And, you know, it was the most baffling space for me because I was like, I don't get this. Like, does this thing just not work for someone like me? Like, am I, am I just like, you know, they would read that thing and how it works. And I was like, am I one of these constitutionally, you know, incapable of being honest folks, you know, that's just never going to get this thing. And you know, luckily, I uh, ran up against this situation. I was like in and out of treatment centers for a couple years of my life. And I remember the last place I didn't even really want to go to because I was like, what's the point? And uh, luckily, that's sure enough where I met someone who kind of broke down the big book to me in a way that I'd really never heard it before. And so it's my intention to kind of share a little bit of that with you all, what was explained to me, and hopefully it resonates with some of you all. And, and you know, maybe you hear something new tonight that gives you a little bit of hope. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I think is so important for me, what's so important for me is to truly understand what it is when I say I'm an alcoholic, you know, being a product, if you will, of like treatment centers and all that stuff, I would come in and be like, yeah, I'm an addict, I'm an alcoholic. On some level, it was very clear because I couldn't stop doing what I was doing, but I didn't really quite understand what I, what I was up against. And so my solution to stop my drinking or to stop my using was to try harder or to call someone before the next time or you know, to kind of do all these things where I was really enforcing my self-will into keeping myself sober. And this guy sat down with me and, you know, like John kind of mentioned, he talked about the disease that I had in part, in like a three-part deal, right? And, you know, two of the parts I had heard before in meetings, this idea of like a mental obsession, which simply is just like this mental blank spot it's referred to, or this idea that like, I say, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do it. And I say it over and over and over. And then one time I say, I'm gonna like, why, why don't I do it? And there's like no defense against that. And I'm off with that one thought. And then I have the second part, which is this body that has this, you know, physical craving, if you will, or this allergy. And so as soon as I say, all right, I'll just do a little bit, I have a body that as soon as it goes in my body, I can't stop doing it. 
you know, and I'd heard those things before, but I thought again, the solution was to just like, just stop myself from using that first one, just, you know, keep coming back to meetings or call someone or anything like that. And then, you know, he really introduced for the first time, the idea of the spiritual malady, which, you know, is, is talked about a little bit in our doctor's opinion. And it's this idea of being like restless, irritable and discontent. You can say bored, anxious, like whatever the case may be. And like myself and probably a lot of us in here, we had that long before we ever picked up, you know. And for a lot of us, I would imagine as soon as the first time we used or drank and it worked, all that went completely away. And it was like, we were at peace, you know, and it was like, holy shit. Like, why did I not find this years ago, you know? And so the problem is like, we don't stay like that, you know, like it wears off. We wake up the next day and, you know, like Bill Wilson talks about it in the story of like, you know, kind of being warned, having these warnings not to do stuff. And like I had addiction in my family and I knew it was probably was not a, a good idea for me to mess with the stuff, but it was like easily pushed aside because soon enough that internal feeling which just become so unmanageable and so miserable that I was like, okay, one more time, you know, and then I do it again. And then it was just kind of, you know, living in that. And I'm sure a lot of you know. And so then I'm in, finding myself in this really like baffled state of, you know, eventually the consequences get bad and I want to stop and I can't. And I remember, I want to read a little bit from the book, just like a paragraph and um, feel free to follow along if you want, if not, just, go read it on your own sometime. Um, it's under there is a solution. And like I had such a vivid experience with this line and um, it's, you know, their solution, it's still talking about the first step. And it's pretty much talking about like coming back from a bender, they call it, or a relapse. And like, it's, you know, if, you, if you've been around the rooms, you'll probably see it a bunch. Like these, you know, I was one of those people. I come back like, oh, I messed up. I get my chip, like, this is what I did wrong. I'm going to change it, right? And so it says, you know, but if you ask me, and I'll read this in first person, why I started on my last bender, or more or less why I relapse, the chances are I will offer you one of 100 alibis, and sometimes these have a plausibility, right? So it's like, oh, my friend just overdosed. So, you know, that's why I'm using again. Or like, you know, she left. That's why I drank again you know, and it's like all these like reasons, right? But it says, so sometimes it will kind of make sense to like a normal person, but it says none of them really make sense in the light of the havoc and alcoholics drinking bouts creates. And then they go on this idea. It's like the philosophy of a man who having the headache beats himself on the head with the hammer so he can't get away. And so think about that, right? Like if I'm saying, oh, my life, like I just got dumped. So that's why I'm drinking again. What I'm really saying is I got dumped and so I'm gonna really fuck up my life as a result of that to make it make me feel better, right? Like that's really what I'm saying. And so, and it says, if someone draws attention to this like BS that I'm saying, um, I might laugh it off, right? And be like, oh yeah, whatever. Or become irritated and refuse to talk, right? And be like, leave me alone. And like, for me, that happened like all the time. And then it, here's the best part. It says, once in a while, I may tell you the truth. And the truth is that I have no idea why I did it. You know, and it's like, I'll never forget this. And again, I forgive me. I know it's an AA meeting, um, but I was, I got really bad into some other outside issues. And it was obvious, like my arms were fucked up and, you know, I was like 110 pounds. And um, I remember my mom came in the room. And she was just sitting down and I'd been like in and out of treatment centers. And she was like, why are you doing this? And I just started like crying. And I was just like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, she's like, why can't you just stop? And I was like, I really don't know, you know? And it's like, that's when I really understood, like after like that experience proved to be so powerful for me because once I really understood addiction or alcoholism, Here's the truth, right? If you're an addict or an alcoholic, the way they talk about it in the big book, here's your truth, ready? It's like, you will use no matter how much you don't want to use on your own power. 
and look at your experience, right? Does your experience confirm that for you? Do you wake up and say, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And you don't do it and you don't do it and you don't do it. And then you do it. Right. So, you know, and it kind of goes in further and it talks about lack of power. You know, that's the dilemma. And like, that's where it kind of takes this spiritual turn and gets into this idea of like finding a higher power and why to solve that problem, the lack of power problem. And, um, you know, here's the, here's the cool thing, right? I'm really glad I don't use for like certain reasons or because of life situations, because, you know, being sober, like, you know, then don't get me wrong. Like life is amazing in many regards. Um, and it's talked about a lot in the rooms from people that are sober of how like good life is like, look at this job or my family or like money or like all this stuff. And I don't want to discredit that. Like everyone enjoys that stuff. Um, but life also still happens. Right. And like, I've been through, you know, I went through a divorce in sobriety. I went through a move from Atlanta. I heard someone in Atlanta down here. That's where I got sober to across the country and literally didn't know one single person right um and like that was pretty fucking uncomfortable you know and like life will present all these situations because life will just still be life but the good news is right like for me working these steps and getting connected to this higher power or whatever you want to call it it's with me at all times Right. And it's not contingent upon this certain meeting going on, because what if you guys stop meeting tomorrow, then I would be fucked. Right. If my sobriety was dependent upon this meeting, excuse my language. Sorry. Um, or, you know, like what if it was dependent upon my sponsor and my sponsor dies tomorrow? Right. Like my my sobriety is contingent upon maintaining a connection with something greater than myself, which happens through working these steps and more importantly, right? And that's what I talk about when I work with guys, it's like shift your mindset. You're, I'm not taking you through the steps for you. I'm taking you through the steps so you can help someone else. And that's that's the, 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 the linchpin of this thing is like, and that's what it talks about like in the uh, doctor's opinion. It says that that's the basis of a rapidly growing fellowship. And I'll be the first to admit, like I work in the treatment industry now and we put a lot of misinformation about AA out there, okay? And, you know, AA in many ways has become a mandatory fellowship with an optional 12-step program. And that is why I think, in my opinion, our success rates are awful right now. Because what, what AA initially started out was was a mandatory 12-step program where we came to fellowship and talk about how working these steps has changed our lives, you know? And so anyways, I'll stop ranting. I hope some of that, you know, makes sense for all of you or some of you, or at least one of you, hopefully. Um, and like, the truth is, is like, if you've been coming a lot and continuing to relapse, get with someone and make sure that, like you can you can qualify sponsors right don't just ask anyone who like you think is like popular or looks cool or like you know anything like that like you know talk to them and be like hey like you know are you comfortable taking me through the steps and also i would suggest to ask them about this whole like circle and triangle thing and see if they understand what that means because ultimately like that's the whole program right is you have that recovery service unity so it's just like okay am i working you know, my own steps, am I involved in the, the fellowship? And don't get me wrong, like it's part of it. This whole thing, like these meetings is part of it, but it's one third of the entire thing, you know? And then the third thing is service. And if you wanna see how, how important it is to be a sponsor, is if there's a chapter, the whole, there, first of all, there's a whole chapter on it. And then the second thing is if you look at the very first sentence of that chapter, called working with others, it says nothing so much will ensure immunity from drinking or drugging or relapse or whatever you wanna say as working with other people, right? And so you do all those things and stay involved in all those things. And here's my guarantee to you, I promise you, you will stay sober. Life will still happen. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're gonna be happy all the time or like, 
super pumped, but I promise you, you'll stay sober. So um, anyways, thanks for letting me share. Appreciate it.